the big little comedy fan. <laughs> Thank you for indulging me. Uh, whenever I'm hosting a show, rather than like being featured or something, I always have this violent urge to like dress straight circus ringmaster and just be that character the entire time. There'd be no jokes, no jokes. Just hype, hype, hype show. Love it. Best show you've ever seen. Uh, but I'm really excited to be here. I'm from Chicago. Never been to Grand Rapids. First timer. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, it's, it's really exciting for me. You know, I, I do most of my stuff in Chicago. I've been to a few festivals and I always get really jazzed up for them. It's a lot of fun to travel and be doing comedy. It's, it's what I've wanted to do my whole life. I love it. But, but, it, but comedy, even though I've always loved it, wasn't always my first dream. My first always dream was rock star. Rock star, right? Like, who doesn't want to be a rock star? Even now, I, like, part of me thinks there's still a chance. Like, just need that one hit. <laughs> that one hit might be coming. But I'm, I'm still so envious of the, uh, the rock star lifestyle. Because if you make it as a rock star, it's a pretty padded life you're living, right? as, as compared to a com comedian. Like, people, people go to a concert, you want to hear your favorite song, right? You go to a comedy show, you want to get lost in something you never heard before. We gotta keep it fresh for you. You're welcome. <laughs> like you can get so good as a rock star, you don't even have to sing your own lyrics. You know? Just give me one of these. Tell everybody else to do it. <laughs> you go to a kiss concert, you're even expecting that. You hear like, ah! Wanna rock it and roll! It's a powerful feeling. I want that. I want that. But no matter how good I ever get at comedy, I can never feel that. You know, I can never be like, blonde walks into a bar on a horse, bartender's like, what's the deal with? Just the ladies now! I love you! That's awkward. You know, I have to pick it up. I just, mean, I just have to pick it up. That's all that happens. <sighs> so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm single, doing the dating game, but I'm, I'm, I'm starting to. Yeah, there are my singles. Woo. All right, but I'm, I'm starting to give up on trying to understand women. Women my age will do things that just defy any type of logic. I'll give you an example. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever had this happen to you. Something that's happened to me multiple times. Get the call, the girl that calls you late at night for protection via phone. <laughs> Has anyone ever played cellular bodyguard before? <laughs> you know, you get this call late at night. It's like, hey, well, I'm just walking to my car right now. I was hoping you could uh, stay on the phone with me in case I get attacked. <laughs> in case you get attacked? <laughs> yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, in the event that you do get attacked, not much I can do. You're basically offering me a soundtrack to your potential assault. And I'm on board with it. It doesn't affect me either way. But, uh, but I'd love to see what, what does this girl expect if an emergency actually arose out of this. I don't know what she would expect me to do. She's like, Will, there's a, there's a guy in a hoodie with a menacing smile. Uh, I think this is the real thing. Well, I'm going to be on the other side of the phone just like, uh, uh, put him on the phone! Put him on the phone! Can you put it? Hello? Are you attacking my friend? Would you stop it? Would you? It's about as good as I could do. Give him a nice tone at least. That might work. I can, I can see that working. He's just like, what? What? Oh, okay. I'm so, sorry, man. I didn't know you had security. Yeah, she did. Oh man, so I had the uh, I had the weirdest interaction uh, recently with this rogue drug dealer. Uh, not, not someone I know or anything. Just some guy posted up, hitting the street. I'm just walking down the, down the street. I hear ecstasy. What? But it wasn't like anywhere you'd expect it, like a rave or a weekend or nighttime. <laughs> just like walking down the street in the middle of a weekday. So and immediately I felt bad for this guy because I mean it's dumb enough to deal drugs, but if you're going into it with the lemonade stand approach, 
I want to rethink some of your life decisions. Line up a buyer. Be responsible. But I, I, I couldn't get this guy out of my head. He was just stuck all day. I was like, ah, that was a perfect situation. I, I didn't say anything. I just kept walking. I don't, I don't do XC on weekdays. Strict policy. <laughs> And I'm thinking about it later, I'm like, I should have gotten a rise out of this guy. And then it hit me. Boom. If I'm ever put in that situation again, I have the absolute perfect way to respond. Best way ever. If you do X do what? Just think about it for like 30 seconds. 20 bucks? 20 bucks? Alright, Just take it. Right in front of him. And walk away. Because how great is that? Who decides to buy and do ecstasy in a matter of seconds? the most jaded drug dealer. That's got to look ridiculous from his perspective. So like, all right, man, have a good one. What, did that just take that? I swear he just took that. That guy is intense. Jeez, he must have a really open afternoon. Yeah, I do. I take ecstasy sarcastically. That's how I live. But I kept thinking how pathetic this guy was. That's his whole sales pitch. Just standing on a corner saying one word. What, like, have a little enthusiasm, right? Like, I guess that's why he is a drug dealer. He doesn't have the skills it takes to function in society. Like, you never walk into a car dealership and see some guys standing there like, Civic. <laughs> Civic. Got it if you want it. Civic. No. no car, car dealers are amazingly persuasive. What would be scary is if car dealers quit their jobs, started selling drugs. Can you imagine that? The natural lure of drugs combined with a little salesmanship? <laughs> That's a scary thought. We'd have a real epidemic in this country. You know, you're in that drug then, he pops out from behind you, he's just like, hey! <laughs> so you're looking at the amphetamines there. <laughs> You got a great eye, those just came in, they're <laughs> flying off the shelf. Now let me ask you, what's your current drug situation? <laughs> Recreational user? Sure. Sure, and that's because you have a job. You have a job. Now what's to say you're not better at performing that job on drugs? 94% of people perform their job better on drugs. Fact. Now I want to know what it's going to take to get you this bag of drugs today. You write down on this piece of paper what you're willing to pay for this bag of drugs. A oh, charismatic drug dealer, I will become him one day. It's a lifelong dream. <laughs> uh, it's a real guy, I feel like, some out there. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, the world is going to heck. I said it, heck. <laughs> And, there, and there's some signs, like literal signs, that are, are make me think that we're all doomed. First one I saw in Wisconsin. Boo! For some reason, I'm from Chicago. I, I picture this like Wisconsin Michigan rivalry. Not, not like in a sporting sense, just like, we got better woods! You can't pay for shit in Wisconsin! <laughs> but I saw this sign in Wisconsin that says, it's over these rolling hills. One, one, one way, no signs at all. The other way, dangerous intersection. That's all it says. Now obviously something happened here. And Wisconsin was like, should we put in a stop sign? Just warn them. Just tell them it's kind of dangerous. It's their fault, man. We, we warned them. What kind of thinking is that? And the real scary one is a sign that, I've, that is all over uh, construction sites in Illinois. Every construction site you go through says, hit a worker, $10,000 fine, or up to 14 years in jail. And that's why we shouldn't be hitting workers. <laughs> like, isn't it sad? We can't just put a sign up that says, like, caution, workers present. <laughs> And everyone's like, oh, well, it's dangerous to be next to the road so close, so I should probably check my speed and be at 10 and 2. No, we have to threaten people about the potential ramifications of just murdering on, like, roadside workers. <laughs> and we 
when you extrapolate from that, the subtext of the sign is really saying, like, we know it's tempting. <laughs> <laughs> They're right there. You've had a long day. But please don't kill the workers. You're going to regret it, is really, is really what it's saying. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> my favorite uh, commercial that I've seen lately is for this product. Uh, for restless leg syndrome, kind of a joke syndrome that is. Why won't my legs rest? <laughs> as soon as I make fun of a syndrome, I expect someone in the audience to like stand up and be like, "Hey, restless leg syndrome killed my mother, jerk." <laughs> but as far as I know, it's not quite that serious, so we can joke about it. But the commercial's great. It states, this product may cause you to fall asleep during normal activities like driving. <laughs> driving? I don't know, falling asleep at the wheel is a side effect. Sounds a little dangerous to me. But then it goes on to the best part. It says, this product may cause increased gambling urges. <laughs> From a pill? Are you kidding me? Tell me people are just like, well, I'll be at the track. <laughs> Chemically, chemically, how is that possible? You're telling me guys are coming home with their prescription and their wives are like, honey, it says it may cause increased gambling urges? I don't know about that. That's uh, pretty dangerous if you ask me. Uh, hun, I wouldn't worry about this. That's no big deal. That's, that's crazy. I don't know. It's, uh, it's been a problem before. You might want to worry. Honey. What do I have to do to prove to you I'm not going to gamble? 20 bucks, I don't gamble. 40 bucks, I don't gamble. 60 bucks, what do you got, lady? Now, I don't know about you. I would rather just have my legs shake uncontrollably instead of being dead because I got in a car crash falling asleep trying to drive to Vegas in the middle of the night. All right, now who's ready for the first improv team? Woo! 